it's Thursday, which means it's day number two for some drawing. Thanks for hanging out with me. Folks, this is the Draw Along Show, which means you draw along with me, Kyle Webster, and I'm glad to be your host on this fine Thursday. Now, to do these drawings, you're going to need something to draw with, like I always say. Now, yesterday I mentioned that you could have a pencil or a pen or a crayon or a stick or a katana sword. And, you know, I got a lot of notes from concerned parents saying that they do own katana swords, as many parents do, and they did not want their kids grabbing those off the wall and trying to draw with them by scratching into the carpet and so on. So I'd like to retract um, that advice and say that instead you should use something like a battle axe. These are much safer. Um, you can use the tip of the battle axe to do some, some work, very fine kind of work, some really good detailed stuff as well. So uh, give that a try, much safer. Uh, that's my advice to you. Now, I hope you're all staying safe and sound out there. Hope you're having a good time. Um, with all this crazy activity we have going on in the world. I know it's challenging and it's a little bit stressful. Drawing will calm you down and keep you sane and it can make you very happy. And the drawing we're going to do today is bound to do that. It has a lot of curvilinear action in it, not something we always do. In fact, this drawing has the longest S-curve we've ever drawn on this show in over 80 episodes. So that's something, right? We'll also have an art tip today. I'm going to help you understand how to draw your plants and trees and bushes and things like that just a little bit better. A nice little tip for that. Um, anyway, my kids are learning about uh, mythology um, in school and had a question for you, which was, uh, why couldn't the Cyclops make a living as a tutor? Well, he only had one pupil. <laughs> and now it's time for us to do some drawing. So let's get your materials together and uh, we are gonna get going here. You can see here what we're gonna draw today. I don't usually do this, but I wanted you to see a little preview of what we're drawing today so you can see that it might look complex, but this is one of those cases where when you break it down to simple shapes, and we're gonna do this step by step, you're gonna say, holy cow, I can't believe how easy that was. So we'll hide that for now, and when you're ready to go with me, we are gonna get started. I'll say hi to some folks in the chat. Here we go. Ruth is here, and Sherry, and RB, and Marana, and Clever, and we have Umacor, nice to see you, and Steve, and Farah, or Farah, um, Aubrey, hey everybody, nice to see you, Ruth is here, lots of nice folks ready to draw along with us today. So, to do these drawings, you need to be able to do a few simple things. If you've been here before, you know what those are. They are a straight line, okay, a zigzag, and a curvilinear line. That could be a C curve, and like I told you, today we're going to do a really long S curve as part of the body of that seahorse. Now, to get started, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see very clearly what I'm doing. We're gonna start with a vertical line, just like that. How long should that be? Well, if you're drawing on a piece of paper, why don't you make that about three quarters of an inch or somewhere thereabouts, maybe half an inch, okay? Just to give yourself plenty of space to draw. This is a mostly vertical drawing. Good to keep that in mind. All right, next we're gonna cut out at an angle down at about, I'd say, you know, 7 p.m., somewhere there about seven, 7.30, between the 7 and the 8 on a clock, if you were to look at a clock, okay? Just like that. Roughly the same length as our first line, isn't it? Okay, it's a little longer, no big deal. If it's a little shorter, also no big deal. Now we're just going to cut up slightly like that, okay? And now we're going to come back down this way. Check it out. Here we go. Whoop, like that. So we're down out at about seven or eight o'clock, then up with a slight zigzag there, and back down. Now this line, if you look at it, is pretty much perpendicular to that line. Perpendicular, what a fun line to say. Fun word to say, excuse me. Fun line to make, fun word to say. Maybe I need more coffee. Okay, we're gonna come back up this way now following along parallel with this first line right here. And then we're gonna cut across, and this is gonna be the first horizontal line of the drawing. I'd like for you please to make it about the same length as this first line we drew, okay? Like that. And that's gonna set us up nicely for the shape of this head of the seahorse, okay? Next, we're just gonna pop over this way and we're gonna make a little vertical line right about here. Oop. That's going to be that little seahorse's eye. Sometimes all you need to do is make a little line for an eye. That's all it takes. Okay. And while we're adding details, I'm just going to come over here and draw a little 
line closer to this line than to this line, not quite in the center, like that. That's gonna be our little seahorse mouth. Okay, how's everybody going out there? Looking good so far? All right, now we're gonna take this line, we're gonna extend it a little bit, and we're gonna do a slight C curve. C curve, see that? Very subtle, very subtle. Now, I'm gonna leave myself a little space and I'm gonna angle upwards, okay? At about a two o'clock angle like this. So it's just a little angle up, a little space there. And then guess what we're gonna do? Same thing, C curve, again like that. And then we're gonna leave a little more space and this time come across this way. This line, this line are roughly the same length. And here comes another one of those C curves. Bam, just like that. All right, hope you're all sticking with me here. And now we're gonna take this angle right here and we're gonna repeat it coming out this way, okay? Zip, like that. Excelente, okay. And now I'm going to repeat this angle, okay? But I'm gonna leave myself a little space. I'm just gonna go one and a two, like that. Simple. All right, now, I want you to make a third line, okay? But we're gonna come up, and then we're gonna come over. Up and over, like that. Cool. All right, and last but not least, you can just make a little line right there to fill in that space. Okay, now from where this comes down, we're just gonna pop back in towards the head like that. See all these interesting shapes we're making? And then right from here, okay, above this line and into this line, we're just gonna make a diagonal line up that way. And that pretty much completes your seahorse head, just like that. We got that done in just a few short minutes. Now it is time for us to address that really enormous S-curve. And here's my advice for this. We're gonna do it in stages, check it out. First, I'm gonna come straight down from here, straight down, okay? And I'm not gonna come at the, at the halfway point for this line. I'm gonna tuck it back more in this direction here, towards this little corner. Down we go. And then just pause and give yourself a moment to breathe and relax. Because now we're gonna do a little C-curve. We're gonna C-curve out this way. C-curve out that way. See that, very subtle, very subtle. That's a shallow C curve. Now we're gonna do another shallow C curve, but it's gonna be longer. It's gonna come around like this, around like this, okay? So around we go, like this. That's not so bad, right? Down and around, all right? And now we're gonna come down this way, okay, another C curve. Again, very shallow, very shallow, okay? But long, long, down and around. Okay, how y'all doing out there? All right, we're gonna carry that up and in. Up and in, spiral action, spiral action. So we came down and out and around and then back in the other direction and up. Longest curvilinear line we've ever drawn on this show. Pretty neato. Um, already, Mercurial says, reminds you of the furry dragon creature from the Never Ending Story. Oh, um, the name of that dragon was Falcor. Falcor, I believe, with an R. Alrighty, now, why don't we address the back of the neck of the seahorse? Okay, now how do you want to do this? Here's what I'm gonna tell you about this. It's actually going to be a line that follows, echoes some of this, but it's gonna come out slightly and down, okay? And then it's gonna come down again, and then it's gonna to connect to here. So it's really not gonna have the big curves that we have here. They're gonna be much more subtle. So subtle, subtle, subtle. But they're going to be interrupted. So watch how we do this. We start, a little space, and we come down for a moment, but we just stop right away. And we're gonna do a series of basically letter L's, okay? Or kind of like V's with one, the right side of the V being shorter, okay? So up we go like that. 
leave a little space. We continue that curve. Okay, we come down like this, and then bam, we pop it out again. And then again, and bam. See that? One, two, three, space in between all the way through. All right, now here comes that really fun little section with that sort of flipper thing a seahorse has. If somebody knows a name for that, please tell me. All right, because we're going to take this L and we're actually going to extend it further out and up like that. All right, everybody with me? All right, now I'm going to follow that same angle. I'm going to go out and do another little curve like that. Then I'm going to go sort of straight out like this. And now we're going to go the other way. We're going to go down and we're going to kind of curve that away. Okay. And then we're going to pick things back up with one more. Boop. Like that. Notice how all the while we're kind of hugging this line. Okay. It's not perfect and that's totally okay. Don't you worry about that. But now we got to come back around down this way. We're going to continue that same thing we were doing, which has become down. See how I'm sort of starting to narrow in here a little bit? And then pop it out with that sort of L shape. And we're going to do it again this way. We're going to go down and then pop it out like that. And around and bam. See this? Starting to get more and more narrow as we come up towards the tail. Now, if you want, you can start from the other side, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, right? Following along this way, following that curve. And from that fourth one, I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna look and I say, okay, let's break that up. And then around and a little break, okay? And bam, there we go. Whoop, there, that's better. And that is how you can do this seahorse, okay? Now the rest is just details, so check this out. I come back over to this little guy, and right in between, I make this a little bit longer because I want to make a C curve here in between, okay? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go around and out and leave a little space there. That's nice. And because we're in the mood to do a lot of letter L's, check out how we do this inside the body okay we're gonna do this check it out I'm just gonna make these little lines that kind of follow that curve okay of the body okay and then I'll maybe stagger them a little bit have them come this way okay do a few more like that maybe put a couple here okay and then I'm just gonna turn them all into those little kind of L shapes. See that? Just add the other part. Bum, 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 bum. And that's all that detail that you saw, okay? And finally, on the inside of the tail, we just do this. We just put little lines that are popping off inside of the tail. And what do you know? You've got yourself a nice little seahorse just like that remember these are your drawings you customize them put them under put your seahorse underwater put your seahorse with some other fish friends add some bubbles add some uh, nice underwater plant life maybe some coral uh, maybe a little scuba diver whatever you want okay this is how you can customize it and make it your own okay and now we move on to the art tip for today. Now for today's art tip, as I mentioned up front, I wanna to talk to you about drawing plants. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a lighter color for a moment and show you something. Sometimes you're like, well, what's the shape of the plant? How am I gonna decide how to draw this group of leaves on the tree and uh, how do I draw the shape of the bush and so on? And what people do is they'll jump in there and they'll just start drawing a bunch of leafy shapes like this, and they're just kind of randomly doing it without any plan. Now I say, don't do that, right? Don't do it that way. Check this out. Here's what I want you to try instead. Give yourself a general idea of how big, let's say there's like a bush growing on the ground. You say, how big is, the, is that bush? Okay, here's the general shape of that. Now inside there, okay, give yourself a few bigger shapes 
to work with. So kind of break it up like this, okay? Maybe something like that. Okay, now I go over top of it with the darker color and I say, okay, hey, now I, I can do this. I've got this shape. So now I can go like this, like that, da, 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 da. Okay, I can come around here, connect that. See that? And then I can sort of fill in those other bits there. And underneath here, I can have a suggestion of the branches growing underneath. See the difference? Now we have a distinct shape that we designed up front. Right, we designed the silhouette of the bush. We wanted it to fit our composition. And so then we made that bigger shape. Now you can do the same thing with trees very nicely, but let me just show you what else you can do with this kind of idea. I can say, okay, I wanna have a plant that's kind of shaped like this, okay? Well, this is great. You can do that larger shape first, and then you can say, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Now I can sort of visualize that I've got some big leafy fronds, okay, kind of, here, one there, one there, and I've got one living over here. Okay, and then I can come in and start working through how that is gonna work for that kind of a plant, okay? Or here, check this out. Back a few steps. What if you wanna do something like this? You wanna then design your branches inside that shape, right? And then you can go around and you can do things like this, okay? Make a little space in there, right? You don't have to be stuck with that shape that you made 100%, but it's a great guideline to get you started. And this will help you work faster and allow you to design plants much more quickly. And for trees, you can imagine how this would work so nicely, okay? So grab that lighter color again. So I know that I've got my trunk, right? And I say, all right, now what? All right, well, I wanna have a big area there. I wanna have an area there. I have a little area there. Okay, and this is, this is how you can design your tree. And then you can say, okay, so I got a branch coming out to here. Got one going up to there. And I know behind it, I've got something going on there. Okay, this all makes sense now. Then I can grab that darker color and I can say, cool, now I can start to just fitting everything inside there, right? You can have little bits and pieces overlap like that. Come over this way, da 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 Okay, have this little section here sticking out on its own. Same with this little guy here. Okay, but you see what I mean? See how this works? And then there's my little trunk branch right there that's coming towards me have this split apart behind there and then up we go into there and then ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, like so maybe got a little branch tucked back there which is going to come up to to there okay we got this sticking out here ba -ba -ba -ba. hope this is helpful give this a try the next time you're struggling with how to design your foliage Okay, so now it is time for the animal and activity game where you will decide what I draw for the remainder of the show, an animal doing something funny, something strange, something weird, something unexpected, um, and I will draw that for you. And then we're, whoops, while you're thinking of that and while you get that typed into the, uh, into the chat, I gotta do a little appreciation station because you know what that alarm means, right? All right, and today, look who it is. Farah, Farah, and Farah, I want to thank you because we were stuck in that cave with that awful man-eating goblin, and I thought we were going to be cooked up for dinner, but you had your little duck collar in your back pocket, you pulled out the duck collar and blew as hard as you can, and you know there's nothing that frightens goblins more than a duck, and so that goblin went running, and we ran out through the cave and down the mountain, and that's the last time I'm going to caving with you, okay? We're not doing that anymore, but I want to thank you for saving us that day with your quick thinking. Many thanks. Okay, now, 
let us get to the drawing. So you tell me an animal, I'll draw it for you. The animal has to be doing something funny, something strange, something unexpected. That's how we play this game. I've got my light blue ready to sketch. Uh, okay, so what do we have today? Let's see. Waiting for some great suggestions. Waiting for some suggestions. Oh, here we go. A bullfrog skiing downhill, a grasshopper golfing. Um, I love that bullfrog skiing. A snake dancing, that's funny. Uh, what else? A panda windsurfing, holy cow. A bear swimming the freestyle, a lizard boxing, a flea shopping. All these ideas, however, time is running out. And so I think I'm gonna go for, let's see, quick, 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 quick. Let's see what we got here. Uh, interesting, interesting, interesting ideas. Interesting ideas. Uh, we did a lizard yesterday. So the bullfrog skiing downhill is funny. I'm gonna try and go for that. All right, so here we go. Let's do this bullfrog. Skiing downhill, skiing downhill. All right. Bullfrog skiing downhill. Anybody ever read those frog and toad stories? They are my favorite. Arnold Lobel, a true genius, a true genius. Um, just what a writer. His stories, they have this whole new meaning if you read them as an adult. They're just really incredibly good. Check them out if you haven't. If you only read them as a kid, please, if you're a grown-up now, read them again. You will be astonished. Some deep stuff. Those frog and toad stories, Uncle Elephant, um, and uh, the owl story, the owl who's owl at home, I believe it's called. Just timeless brilliant stuff can't say enough uh, amazing things about 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 that work truly great ba -ba -bum. skiing look at this skiing amphibian huh the only problem with this drawing is, you know, we've seen this before. The toads, you know when it's when it snows out, this is the first thing they go do is grab their skis and go, but but that's okay, I don't mind drawing it. Even if it's a common occurrence. We've all seen it. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Woo! The clock is ticking. I'm getting nervous. I've got about three minutes. Three minutes! Let's knock it back. Jump on top. The darker color. And let's make it happen. Bam. Boom, 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 boom. Here is our Bullfrog enjoying a fine day on the slopes. By the way, I am terrified of skiing. Only been twice in my life. Injured myself pretty badly the first time out. Unlikely I'll do it again anytime soon. I'll, I'll you know I'll do it if I'm forced. If if you know the rest of my family wants to try it sometime, but uh, it's not for me. It's not for me. Some people just can't ski, you know? I'm, I'm fine with not being able to ski very well. Remember that this fabric is folding, you know? Remember those kinds of things when you draw this stuff. Think about what's happening to that fabric? What's overlapping what? So on. You know, even if, you, even if you've only got like <laughs> two minutes to draw something, just keep it in mind. 
Bam, bam. Oh, racing the clock as we do sometimes on this show. You know how it is. Stakes are high. This is, this is one of those like really suspenseful, dangerous kind of drawing shows, right? Not too many of those. Bam. Look at that snow go flying. Okay. He's having a good time, this guy, right? And uh, I think we're pretty much good to go there. What do you guys think? Did that work out? Yep, we're gonna have to say okay for now because we're pretty much out of time, gang. Well, there he is. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with me. Hope you had a very nice time. And tomorrow's my master class, part three of our editorial uh, illustration. We're checking out editorial illustration, so tune in for that at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Hope to see you there. Um, until then, take care, please, of each other, of yourselves. Remember to be kind. And for now, I'm going to say ciao.